very positive. Now, I have uh, an old time friend of mine by the name of Carl Brandt that pointed out something that I didn't realize until a couple years ago. And Carl says, if you think about it, why don't men solo dance? Because most of the solo dances have been written by ladies and they have a right foot leap. And so what Carl did was to take a bunch of dances and convert them over into a left foot leap. Because, and he says, I immediately approved the acceptance of the dances with all of the males that I, I, that I, I get from the contact. He says, I have a much easier time getting the boys up on the floor. Carl teaches uh, at, a, uh, at a university, in the university environment. And he just switches a whole bunch of these dances over simply to a left foot lead. This would mean the name is Moses, that, or, or in some of these dances, you're going to go grapevine to this way. You great time in this way, and then one, two, three, and turn this way. It's just the opposite way of what we've been taught. If you're doing it within a, a closed group, who cares? You know, it, it's a matter of you're, you're, you're trying to figure out how to do it. He says the interesting thing Carl said was that the ladies don't seem to have a preference. That they work very well starting off either a left foot lead or a right foot, right foot lead. And they don't seem to have a preference like the guys do. Okay, why is this true? When we are in marching band, when we are in the armed forces, what is it all the time? You're left, you're left, you're left, right, left. We are ingrained from the time we step on the floor for the first rigid thing that we do in marching band or in military to stick that left foot out first. And so it's a natural for the man to have a left foot leap. All right, a couple of other observations that just may be tied to my particular experience. Uh, I usually, when I do round dances, I find a reasonable number of the crowd that has learned how to do the electric slide. And so I've had to modify what I do in order to be able to get them to do what I want them to do. And I usually do this with a series of about three or four solo dances that seem to work. And the first one would be Amos Moses without the funny little turn, with just a heel and a heel and a walk, two, three, turn. Now, I've switched leads. I don't care which way you go, just keep in mind Carl's point. That if you do a left and a left and a one, two, three, you're going to all have to turn this way. If you swap feet, you're going to have to turn the other way. The action of being able to do a step behind, step, and turn is hard. It's a very difficult action, I find, to try and get the new beginning dancer to do, in fact, I find it's a hard dance to try and get experienced dancers to do. On, on Amos Moses, uh, there are different skill levels to me that you see on the floor. And you're going to have some people who are going to be able to go bang and they're ready to go and they know what to do. And you're going to have some people that the most, it's like your kids, you know, the most are going to be able to get a heel and a heel and a one, two, three, turn, that's the max some of these guys are going to be able to do. And it's primarily the guys, although I'm finding more and more it also translates into what the ladies can do. So I just say, it, the, the other thing's a variation. You know, this is the true dance. Who's, who's, who's going to challenge me? So I go heel, and a heel, and a one, two, three, or to heel, and we do that four times until they finally get around the corner. And I can kind of see that, oh yeah, it looks to me like at least 80% of the floor is able to do that. And then I tell them, okay, here's a variation. And I show them the second step, the side behind. And I say, folks, don't make it the full leap at once. Sneak into it. And you do a heel, and you heel, and you watch your neighbors. And when you get real cool about it, maybe you just kind of edge into it like this. And when you get real good, then you can do the real side behind step. This gives them no pressure to have to succeed. 
that allows them to be successful with the first set of rim and not have pressure applied. Now what you end up having to do is you have a heel and a heel and a one, two, three, four. At the end of the dance that some people will be doing or spinning the opposite way. I only set two rules when I go to beginner parties and I teach solo dance. The first rule is you all got to end up facing the same direction at the end of the routine. And the second rule is you can't get in anybody else's way. And that's really the only two rules that I personally set. And I let them spin right, I let them spin left, I let them do it the simple way, they can do anything they want to as long as when they end up the end of the routine, if we got a four wall dance, everybody's looking in that direction and they haven't crashed into someone. Okay, this, you know, this gets into personal approach that may or may not work for you, all I'm doing is, is telling you where I've found success. All right, people who are have who have been taught the electric slide have a terrible time rocking forward and back. Uh, one of the early dances that I used to do, and I've almost dropped it because it just doesn't work, is called the the uh, the Texas Hustle. It's done to a tune called Runchy, and basically it's a side behind side. The side behind side, and back up two, three, and rock, 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 turn. Once again, I'm doing the left foot thing, I'm doing the left foot lead thing. Okay, because these people have gotten that six count tap thing going, you can't get them out of it. And so instead of doing this lately, I have dropped that particular dance, I do a freeze. The old Texas freeze, and they do a tail wire. You can play some of these tunes if you want to. But you do a one, two, three. A one, two, three. Back up, two, three. Freeze, two, three, four. The freezing action stops that tap thing and makes it count to four. Now turn. Okay? Let me, let me, let me put on a uh, let me put on. into this business of the tap, tap, and the six count in the turn. So that you can get them doing what you want them to do in the dance. The second thing is, most of them have never seen a Texas freeze. Okay, how can you add to this? The only rule is that you must freeze and not move a muscle. Freeze with style. Freeze with determination. Freeze with a lasso, a hat tip, a pistol. You know, let them do their imagination. Uh, particularly when I'm working with teenagers. God, they think this is great. I mean, you see some real innovation out there when you're working with teenagers. Particularly the girls. I mean, the boys get into the expressiveness if they have a girl challenge in Otherwise, they're like little wooden soldiers. But you get the girls, they really get into the place of where they do it right. Okay? So, these sort of things, depending on the group help. If I'm working with a group of seniors, obviously, you're going to, they'll, they'll, they'll tip their hat. They may pull a pistol. But that's about as far as they're going to go. All right? Then we have basically done the parts to the electric slide. And in the average group that I've now seen, maybe 25% of them have done the electric slide, but they've looked upon the electric slide with a great deal of envy of the people who can actually do it. And so I've already taught them half, right? Side behind side, 
the side behind, side. Back up, two, three. Now we've got to do something here in order to get the turn. And I say, folks, I want to show you what you're supposed to do. If you can't do it, count to the six and turn. No one will ever know. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? That's what the electric slide does. And then we have some people that have this little brush thing. The original one didn't do the brush. And I say, folks, I say, don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. Do something for six counts. If you want to do one, two, three, four, five, six, and turn, fine, but do something for six beats. The second thing I always try and do is to warn the musicians in the crowd that this has absolutely nothing to do with music. Because somebody, if you don't do this, the musicians in the crowd, somebody's going to come up and say, that dance doesn't start at the same place every time. You know, they, <laughs> yeah, they do. They come up, it doesn't start the same That's place right. every time, and I say, I know. You know and, 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 all the hum, well, the humming gully is, you know, it's like a lot of the dances. The ones recently are, are 29 steps and, and 31 steps and 67 steps. They, they are all set up so that you can, you can fit it in with the, the, the modern way of being able to construct music. <coughs> but basically, I don't put a lot of pressure on one, two, three, four, five, six. I, if they want to rock, I show them. I get them as far as to the place of where count to six, do something for six, turn the corner, and go again. And eventually, by the end of that particular session, or by the end of that particular piece of music, those people will be able to do it fine. Occasionally, uh, when, when I'm working with the teenagers, I always try and show the teenagers the electric boogie and the slide step. Because they are going to really have a blast doing the electric boogie in the slide step.